Blessed Sabbath, everyone. Blessed Sabbath. We're going to keep this fairly informal. So we're going to have a word of prayer, and then I will say a couple of things, and we will begin. Let us pray. My loving, merciful Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the blessed Sabbath that you've given to us thus far. We thank you for the privilege of being able to have this time where we can learn many things, the different avenues in which Satan attacks your people, each one of us. And as we continue this afternoon in this question and answer period, we just ask for your Holy Spirit by the authority of the blood of your Son, that the questions asked will be of the nature that will help and edify everyone listening, and that the answers given will be exactly what needs to come from your throne. And these things, Lord, we just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, as I had stated in the emails and text and messaging that I that have done, you can, for those of you who are connected with WhatsApp and my account, you can use WhatsApp, you can use um, text messaging. Uh, and then also the email. I really um, was impressed because as soon as I posted that we were going to have this, one of our lay ministers in Kenya almost immediately sent a uh, basically a series of statements, questions that we're going to address first. To give you a little update, this gentleman, his post office is 250 miles away from where he lives. He is in the bush, the bush bush. It takes him two days just to get to the post office. Oh, wow. um, he. To, to last time I knew, he had like three churches that he services, and each of them are a day apart. So when he goes, it's a day's travel everywhere he goes. Um, it is midnight there. <laughs> it's not four o'clock in the afternoon. Right? Right. But I know he's online, and so without ado, I'm going to... Uh, read his email and uh, give pastor all the time he needs in discussing the subjects that are part of his question. He makes the statement here saying, in the, in the ministry many ask about the mystery of iniquity and how it, it, it was woven into the miracle of life. Like, why was it allowed to ever be in existence? Most people ask this in the field. Some ask if it is morally ethical to lie to protect other people from danger, especially those in the faith. Others ask, why is God allowing some of his faithful saints to suffer so much when he can rescue them fast? And on and on, answer this for me. It will help me in the field. These are some of the things that are reality. We struggle with a lot of deep theology. But these trusting individuals are serving in the basics of the gospel. And understanding even why sin exists is a very difficult thing for these young men to uh, help the ones that they are serving uh, understand thoroughly. So we'll give you the time to develop what 
this gentleman, what this pastor is dealing with, and how you would deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And that's oh, yeah. Take plenty of time. Dude. And, and, and actually, it's all wrapped up in, in one thing, and that's we find it in um, the Spirit of Prophecy, um, uh, Volume One, and we also find it in the story of redemption. But let's look at the backdrop as to how the whole thing of the mystery of sin and how it formulated itself. It, it's. Sister White tells us we cannot explain sin. It's a mystery. It's not something that you can explain. To actually try to explain it is a sin. It's something that happened, but it's something that God was prepared to address when it did happen. God is not like humans that if he saw something happening or something getting ready to happen, he would stop it before it was happening especially when you look at how Satan would have looked at it because he knew he had created in making and creating Satan he had created as close to a God as he possibly could so Satan in his Lucifer at the time. Lucifer right in his ingenious mind would have immediately turned to oh this shows you how unfair he is he didn't allow me to do what I wanted to do he stopped it before it happened and there there right there would be an indictment of God in and of itself so when we look at God allowing this to happen, we have an absolutely clear picture of how that happened or when it happened or how God addressed it. And we see it in the Spirit of Prophecy, Chapter 1. Spirit of Prophecy, Chapter 1, uh, page 21. And, um, the prophet says, the loyal angels, and you can also find this in the story of redemption, Chapter 1, page 17. She, said, she says, the loyal angels hasten speedily to the Son of God and acquaint him with what is taking place among the angels. They find the Father in conference with his beloved Son to determine the means by which for which for the best good of the loyal angels, for the good of the loyal angels, the assumed authority of Satan could be forever put down. So let's take that part right there first. The angels wanted God to just stop it. Because they came to God and he and the son were in conference. But God was dealing with what is the best way for not the evil angels, but for the good angels. Again, I'll read. They find the father in conference with his beloved son to determine the means by which for the best good of the loyal angels, the assumed authority of Satan could be forever put down. His objective right from there says... I need to make sure that the loyal angels understand what I'm getting ready to do and why I'm doing it. If I just stopped it, there would have been no lesson. There would have been no understanding of why I do what I do. Okay, so let's go further. And here's the answer. The great God could have at once, could at once have hurled this arch deceiver from heaven, but this was not his purpose. God could have stopped this mystery immediately. But then he, he, he would have never been able to say that I gave it a chance to see if it was fair, if this idea of sin was a fair idea. If, it, if God stopped it and said it's a fair idea, it's an unfair idea, they're saying, well, what are you basing it on? Make sense so far? There was no basis. Right. There is no basis. So they got, he has to let it play out. So then we see, it says, he would give the rebellious an equal chance, equal chance, to measure strength and might with his own son and his loyal angels. So the playing field, he says, I'm making the playing field equal. Let's see if what you're doing is something. Am I giving you a fair shot? Am I giving sin its fair opportunity? Or, and he wasn't called sin at the time. Am I giving Lucifer a chance to prove his point? Because what Lucifer was, was um, revealing or trying to reveal was that God is unjust in what he's trying to do. But it was already inside of Lucifer to challenge God. It was already there now. By the time he gets to God, it had already, it was not going to stop now. From a scientific standpoint, if you take pure water, pure water that you're used to tasting, pure water, it's easier for that, for you to taste the impurity once it's put in that water. Right? But if it's water that even is a little bit of tainted, it's harder for you to taste it. 
So sin was now being put into purity. Okay, sin was put into a pure glass of water and, and it was starting to move very, very quickly. But God says, I can't stop it. Not that I can't, I won't stop it. It has to be allowed to show that it is good or bad. Because it's trying to say that I'm bad and it's good. So we go on. It would not be safe to suffer any who united with Satan in his rebellion to continue to occupy with to occupy heaven. Process. God is allowing these steps to take. They had learned the lesson of genuine rebellion against the unchangeable law of God, and this is incurable. So they already had shown that they were under an incurable situation, but God said, I still cannot stop it yet. That's how he operates. He said, the, the loyal angels have to see that I'm not being unfair because if he'd stopped it, what would they have said? Well, we know from other, other quotations that half of the angels that stayed with God still doubted and had questions in their minds, but they their trust in the Father and the Son was enough to keep them out of rebellion. Amen. Amen. But the problem was is they had to contend with that doubt all the way through to the crucifixion. Amen. That's exactly and, right. And then you have the issue with the fallen, with the unfallen worlds. They also were having a spectacle. But mm -hmm. I go back to um, before sin, before the foundation of the world, Christ was our sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he can allow these things to keep going. Now, there's a question, part of the question here is, and I'll get to the second part later. What, what Brother uh, Kip says is, why does God allow faithful souls to suffer? For the same reason he allowed Job. Mm -hmm. Okay? There are ministers and laity around the world that suffer. Mm -hmm. Whether it be uh, physical situations or persecution of all men. Paul says, all that live godly will suffer mm -hmm. persecution. But this persecution is not unto damnation, but for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And so it's when we question why God allows it that the doubt of Lucifer comes in. It's, and I know this from a personal life, it's hard to trust when you're in pain. Mm -hmm. When you are under a lot of difficulties, privation. Um, for instance, this pastor, he's, he tries to grow his food. He's, he's helping the needy, the, the poor, in that bush area of Kenya. And it is the most desolate area of Kenya you can imagine. But yet, he's doing what he can do, which is very limited. Mm -hmm. I mean, the poor you'll always have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we already know. But he does what he can, and it is very difficult in his situation because the people he's trying to reach are completely un, un, illiterate in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so they have the most basic questions of why? 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 Simple. Why am I here in Kenya suffering when all the streets in the United States are paved with gold? At least that's what they think. <laughs> you know, all of these things, it's always better on the other side. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize how difficult it's even here. Mm -hmm. And all they see is the privation that they have and they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. and, and so the encouragement that I would give the pastor also is do not give up trusting in our loving Heavenly Father mm -hmm. because heaven is cheap enough. Amen. Amen. And those that have suffered the greatest will be lifted up higher than everyone from That's anyone right. else. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll go back to the second part of 
I want this question. Since you since you start on that, I want to go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know what? You know, Paul says he causes to rain on the just, just and the unjust. So that puts Satan in a position where he says, "Well, you always treat the good, the good, the people who follow you good, and you always treat." The people who don't follow you back, God says, "No, I'm going to let it rain." Equal, no Equal. respect. No person. respect. So, when we are following the Lord, He's actually giving us a degree of hedge so that Satan can't say, "Well, the only reason they they're following you, like in the case of Job, is because He's blessing you." That puts Satan in a position where he can't say, "Well, this is why you're doing good because you're following me," and God doesn't care about you because you're not following Him. So God allows things to happen, but as the pastor just said, no matter how it happens to those who are just, God is still taking care of us. He could, he could starve us completely, but what he does is he allows certain things to happen so that it draws us closer to him and appreciate when he does do good things for us. But if we live in a situation like, for instance, in Kenya, or even someplace even, even more tougher than Kenya, Papua New Guinea, God allows these things to happen but he's also making a way so that those who come out of these situations can see that it was him and not humans that brought him, brought him out of it. Even if a human seems to help them, God's working through that human to, to help them. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, this uh, second one, I think, is... Oh, let me, let me add another part to this. Go ahead. In the same statement, in the spirit of prophecy, she says, if God had exercised his power, to punish this chief rebel, Lucifer, disaffected angels would not have been manifested. So there were some, like you said, mm -hmm. who weren't saying that they had a problem with God. They just were being quiet, sitting still, waiting to see who's going to win. And God doesn't play, because that's sitting on the that's fence. Game, that's game. Yeah, that's game. <laughs> they were sitting on the fence, but they weren't saying which side of the fence they were on. So God said, I have to let this play out. So those who are actually, because God can read every mind. So those who were acting as if they were on God's side, but really in, on the middle, on the fence, he was allowing them to show which side they were on. And then once they showed, they were, once it was manifested, hence God took another course, for he would manifest distinctly to all the heavenly hosts his justice and his judgment. So sometimes it looks like somebody's following God, mm -hmm. but it's not. It, it looks like someone doesn't believe in God. But they do. That's why he says he allows he allows the wheat and the tares to come up together. I saw it this week when I was pulling up weeds. They were they were taking as much of the nutrients from the strawberry plants as they could. So how did they get the nutrients? Because God made a way for both the wheat and the tares. And God does allow for that. But when the strawberries come up, the weeds, the weeds will be gone. Because I pulled them up. Amen. <laughs> Because <laughs> I could tell, I could, I could tell, because he showed me how to see. Amen. <laughs> the, this question, the second part here, um, is it morally ethical to lie to protect other people from danger, especially those of faith? Um, I'm on, before. I bring it to you. I'm going to put some context here. Okay. Kenya is not a hotbed of Muslim, but because of where he is, he's in the far north areas. We were. That's where the Muslims are now Hope starting to, to come in mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, deal with um, Christianity. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of eth eth uh, ethnicity, wars of ethnicity in Kenya. There's a lot of things that go on. Uh, so I'll let you go first on, is it morally ethical to lie to protect other people from danger? Uh, this would be a difficult question if it was back during the time of Joshua and the people um, sending the spies, the two spies to Jericho. Because if we think about Rahab and her line, that she didn't know any better. But in the case of a Christian, 
if we lie, that 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 is a commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Amen? Amen. So if we're not supposed to bear false false witness, it's like um, it's better to tell the truth and deal with the consequences than to lie and have to keep lying because one lie leads to another lie. Even if we think that we are helping or protecting someone, we cannot protect someone by telling them a lie. That's my position. The Bible says we are not to lie to one another either. Now, the question is, do we understand what a lie is? A lie is a false a lie. Is a true. lie is anything that exaggerates mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. Or diminishes. Diminishes the truth. Mm -hmm. That says nothing but the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. Now, from this standpoint, I would like to maybe interject this. Okay. How are we, how are we to judge God's purpose in this situation? We know someone's in danger. We know we can prevent that danger. But God will honor the obedient. Who is stronger, God or Satan? No question, hands down. Okay, when we are lying to so-called protect somebody, mm -hmm. are we not saying that I have to step in mm -hmm. and take care of God's business of protection? Mercy. Okay, isn't that the same thing that Sarah said to Abraham? Look, I can't give you a son, so here you take this woman. And what happened to that? And what happened? We were still dealing with that. You going to deal with it to them? They were still dealing with that kind of decision. So all of these different aspects of um, whether we should tell the truth or not, no, always tell the truth. But in telling the truth, make sure that our lives are right in Christ and that we ask, Lord, with your angels that protected Elisha, protect these people to show your power is more than man. Amen. Amen. And then leave it, leave the rest with God. Mm -hmm. uh, Blanche, you had a question, I thought. Yeah, we also had, a, when you mentioned Abraham, we also had a case where he told his wife to say that, although she was technically his sister, but she was his wife. And to lie to say that she's his wife to protect him. So yeah. that's an example of a situation like that. And it was not well with God. No, and, um, and, and Abraham suffered twice because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't learn the first time, yes. so he had to do it a second time. Mm -hmm. And see, and all this that he did in not trusting in God, this is the reason he had to have to deal with the test, mm -hmm. the yeah. final yeah. test yeah. of saying, okay, Abraham, do you really trust me? Because if you don't trust me here, you can't be the lineage of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to sacrifice the very seed of Christ from your womb, from your wife's womb. Mm -hmm. And so the test of the sacrifice of Isaac was made because of all of the other failures in his life. He had to come to a point of trusting no matter what <laughs> okay that's the same thing it is with us mm -hmm. we cannot look in the past and say i failed here i failed here i failed here know this you're going to come to a time when you're going to have to trust no matter what and leave it with god otherwise you are not going to be ready when probation closes that's right two things Go ahead. Remember, Sister White says, are the people of God so sorry to the truth that they will not believe the evidences of their senses? So in other words, no matter what you see, he has said it already in the sermon. And so no matter what it is, you have to say, I trust God's word. Amen. You can't even trust yourself. Or any eye, yeah. any, anything you see. That's right. Okay. Especially in the in the days now of AI. It, oh, yeah, that's a, I that's mean, a whole different story now. We, you, that. That's I mean, control. you're on, you're on online with your videos. I'm on with mine. 
technology now has it where they can take, they can take our preaching, mm -hmm. our video of preaching, take our body out, take That's all it. the words out, and make that video say something completely different right. than any of us or any actions that we would make and put us in any situation and you would not be able to tell that it wasn't us. And, and, and it's almost impossible to defend yourself. No, you can't defend it. Right. It's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. and, and and I have seen uh, political satire used mm -hmm. with yes. AI. Mm -hmm. And literally, you cannot tell. Entertainment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Entertainment is, is wild now. With it. They don't even need so many actors. Exactly. exactly. John, yes. you'd be surprised. You're going to have a new John Wayne movie come up. Right? That's what's coming. Because they've got the video. All they got to do is just, just tell the computer to, to do a new movie. With, you know, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Right. All of these things Satan's going to be using. These are the deception of the last days. We are going to have to know each other's character. Mm -hmm. All right? To say, no, Pastor be. Burns will never do that. Mm -hmm. And that was not Pastor Burns. Even though your eyes say it's Pastor Burns, I know it wasn't. That's what the objective will be to change your position, thus, thus changing your perspective. That's number one. Now, the next, the next one is number two. How do we as a church get into the circumstance or in the situation where we're split on the issue of the King of the North? Because when Uriah Smith did his sermon on the King of the North, James White heard it, and because he knew that the church still had debt, it had. Barrington, it hit, um, um, oh goodness, it's the college up in um, Battle Creek College, and it had other debt that was hanging over its head, and people had committed to the debt. But when they heard Uriah Smith in 1870, 1870, 1877 preaching about the Russian Turkish War, he said that, well, everybody thought that this was it. This was that, that war that was going to draw everyone into it, thus taking us to Revelation 16. And so in the crowd, people said to, to James White, people who had already de dedicated or promised money to the cause, they said to James White, they said, you're too late, James White, too late for your, all your objectives. So in other words, James White heard this. I have the document from Willie White. James White felt that if these people do this, we won't be able to pay off our debt and we're going to be in trouble when we get into the time of, time of trouble because people are going to come after us and take away our facilities. So James White runs up to the stage after Uriah Smith and, and gives a counter to what Uriah Smith had preached. Even though he didn't believe it, but he thought that what was going on was bordering on fanaticism. That's why Sister White sent him a letter. She chastised him and she said that God would have taken care of it. If you'd have just let, they had never shown division. Yeah. If they'd have never, if they'd have never shown division, they they never before then. The leadership was always on the same page. Even if they didn't agree, they agreed behind closed doors. Disagree. Excuse me, Becky. They never disagreed, but that was the first time they disagreed, and it was a public disagreement. And James White brought into the church division. He didn't believe it because even um, Willie White said he sent the asses father. Do you really believe that what Uriah Smith is saying is not true? He said, I was trying to stop fanaticism. He never said that he didn't believe it. He was, so there you have it. He thought that by telling people what he, what, what he, he needed to tell them, that would stop the, the people from not giving them money. But what did it do? It caused a division in the church that we are still dealing with today, just like Abraham. Yes, and the fact of the matter is the only article that has uh, James White's signature on or mm -hmm. credit to him. It is written in a style that James White never Froom's wrote. Document. Document. It, it's That's more right. of a Froom document mm -hmm. than it is a James White. Uh, James White document, and that's all I'm going to say. Exactly. About. So we have to be so very careful not to, as you say, add to or take from the truth. We don't do that. We tell the truth, and if James White didn't have the truth, if he couldn't substantiate his position, it was incumbent upon him to say nothing. But if we embellish the truth to make it sound the way we want, it's still, it's still alive. Before we, 
just hold off uh, before we go any farther. Um, Loughborough recounts a, a testimony of one of the members right around the time of Ellen White's death who was approached by someone who believed in the uh, King of the North as the papacy. And Ellen White told the individual oh, yes. not yes. to print it, exactly. that it would cause division, that it was not the truth, mm -hmm. and that he should never present it in mm -hmm. public. This um, letter that was written by Ellen White was never brought to public view whatsoever. Loughborough, who was at the time with Ellen White, um, had the privilege of being able to know and see the letter and understand what was being on, and he recounts it very vividly. But that is the only um, actual uh, documentation that we have that Ellen White specifically talked about the King of the North and its and it, the reality of it being Turkey. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is Ellen White didn't need to. We know right now, with all the documentation that we have between the two of us, that at least seven of the pioneers of first, second, and third generation God-ordained pioneers, and some that weren't even accepting righteousness by faith, all understood the prophecy mm -hmm. in Daniel 11 correctly. Exactly. One of the other things is that I want to challenge anybody who thinks James White um, went along with the King North as the papacy. I want to ask you one question. I'll do it publicly here. You can email me at Facebook. I don't care what it is. You, you, you can message me. Uh, the, my email will be on the screen. This is a fact, and I will give you the original document and PDF. James White, as the editor of the review, put in an article by one of the brethren showing that the seven last plagues are all literal plagues. <laughs> there is no one today, no one in the general conference or self-supporting work that teaches the papacy as the king of the north, that also teaches the literal seven last plagues. Not a single one. All right. In 1919, when the papacy was entered in as the king of the north, they fixed their problem about the papacy as the king of the north because at that conference they were still ardently believing that you could also believe that all seven last plagues were literal. But between 1919 and 1940, they fixed that and went to a spiritual sixth plague. Mm -hmm. This is church history that a lot of people don't want to hear because then they have to admit that they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to be lost because of pride. Mm -hmm. Not because of doctrine, but because of pride. Mm -hmm. Pride is what's going to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. Because you will not admit that you're wrong. That's what's going to kill eternally Seventh-day Adventist is pride. And that's what and that's what happens when you tell a lie and you don't say I'm, I, I lied. I, I would make a mistake. I should not have said that. That's Forgive right. me. Right. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have a couple more here in the in sanctuary, but we're going to stop uh, and go to someone online. We've got several online already. So, I just have a comment. Okay, go ahead. When you brought up about the AI, mm -hmm. it came to me that maybe you should make CDs again to cover your tail. Because... It doesn't matter. I record everything. I have I have everything that I've ever done recorded. Mm -hmm. I have them stored. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. There is nothing that has been done in this sanctuary that's not recorded. I don't publish it all, but it is video recorded. And so if, if someone wants to manipulate using AI, that's their problem. <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah, I've got all the originals of it. That's why I keep all the originals of all the reviews, all of the science, every all of it. I got all the originals. 
over 16,000 PDFs of all the different Pioneer originals. And you can say whatever you want. I can show you down to the thousands of a percent an expansion where it's the original article. Um, because when I do, I, I can do photo editing. I've done it for now 30 years. And I can show you how I can use two resolutions that are not compatible and make them look compatible. Mm. All right. But I also can identify when it's been done. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, this one here is from Florida. Is Isaiah 28, 18. Let's open our Bibles to that. Isaiah 28, 18. Um, anybody here in the congregation want to read it? Somebody want to volunteer with a mic? All right. And 2818. Okay. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. All right, you've been cutting out so bad, I don't think anybody heard. Um, go ahead, Pastor. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. So what's the question? The question is, saying that when one disregards God's law, he has made a conscious decision or covenant with death. So the question is what? <laughs> Is Isaiah 28, 18 saying that when one disregards God's laws, mm -hmm. he has made a conscious decision or covenant with death? Well, look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. What does okay. verse 15 say? What does verse 15 say? Because we have made a covenant with death. So I would say the answer is yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. And 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 this is not a sleep death. Okay, let's, this is, let's, the, the, this death is death. the second this death. This is the second death. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we need to make sure we understand this is not the sleeping death. This is a, a eternal death. Mm -hmm. Yes, when we are consciously disregarding the, um, the heavenly sanctuary, for instance, which is where our high priest is right now, this very day, um, we are making a covenant with death. Okay, we cannot disregard our high priest's work for our behalf and live eternal life. Mm -hmm. It's just the two are not compatible. And so, yes, when we are disregarding the laws of God, His revealed word, yes, we are making a covenant with death. And remember, He operates as we discussed this morning. God speaks to us through our nerves. And so when the Holy Spirit is trying to communicate with us and we reject it, what is that called? Grieving the Holy Spirit. Yes. So he's trying to communicate with us, but when we push back or disregard the work that he's doing through the Holy Spirit in us, that, uh, that also is grieving the Holy Spirit. It's disannoying because our conscience is what talks to us. And our conscience is communicated to through the Holy Spirit. And again, um, for a reference point, uh, online with our uh, videos to four steps and rejecting the Holy Spirit, most everybody is on one of those four steps. So let's understand and know that if we are in any form of disobedience, we are on one of those steps of disregarding and grieving the Holy Spirit to the final step mm -hmm. of total abandonment. Mm -hmm. And none of us want to be at that step. And here's the other thing. I did this. I, I spoke this uh, several weeks ago now. That was the road that Saul was on. That's right. You know what? You know, to obey is better than sacrifice. That's right. Right? And so 
the prophet Samuel is telling Saul, you're on this road. And if you're not careful, Saul, you're going to be on the road to idolatry, stubbornness, and witchcraft. But he's, which he went on, but Samuel was telling him early on, but he just kept going down that road. And the whole thing was, if you are disobedient, it's no different than making yourself the king of your throne. Because this is God's, this is the temple, and this is where God is supposed to be, the front row. Mm -hmm. So when we place ourselves where God is, we make ourselves our idol. And as a result, we open the door for what? Witchcraft, Satan to come in. That's a delusion. So we have to be very careful that when God is trying to communicate to us, do we say, well, I know better than you, God? Because when I say, I know better than you, God, God says, okay, I'm going to throw a couple of stumbling blocks in front of you. But if the stumbling blocks don't work, sooner or later, I'm going to turn you, turn you over to your own delusions and to that stand. Now, on that uh, subject of, of the mind, um, before I get to this question here, mental issues. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of times when in, in counseling that I've done, people who are suffering depression, mm -hmm. who is are suffering a lot of different aspects of of um, what modern medicine calls psychosis, mm -hmm. um, almost without failure is some form of unforgiveness. And what, what, well, how can you, how can you reach and how can you help someone who feels like there's no hope from this, that standpoint of, I can't get out of this rut of how I feel. So I have to have this drug. And I'll give you an example, personal example. I was talking, this was almost 30 years ago now. I was talking with a friend and they said, I'm standing here in my house. I, if the house was on fire, I would just stand here and laugh at it and die because I don't care. She, the person, she was on Prozac, okay? Prozac is a suicidal drug. It's a suicidal drug, and most people don't realize it's a suicidal drug. You are going to end in suicide. Mm -hmm. And this, praise the Lord, she's off of it. And living a very healthy life emotionally and mentally. But she was going through a completely insane situation in life at that time. Mm -hmm. And she said, I need help. But I, 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 I need to quit this stuff because it makes me not, I don't even want, I don't even care what happens. In other words, she didn't she care about any responsibility at all. And here is someone who she she was she had everything she wanted. Everything you would think. Wanted. Well, everything from, she, from this earth. Right, but see, unfortunately, everything we wanted is not necessarily everything we need. Well, that's what <laughs> you know, that's what we have to learn sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things that, you know. I talk to this person about once every month, just to check in with, with them. And, you know, she has her grandchildren around her all the time now. She, she's living the life of trusting God for the first time in her life. Mm -hmm. And and so it's one of those things that is a difficult rut to be in. And what what would you say? With some trying to help somebody in that situation, given with this, the spiritual warfare that's going on, the, the demonic forces that are trying to control the minds of Seventh day Adventists, mm -hmm. because there are so many people who are they're afraid, they're afraid because who, are, who am I going to trust? Mm -hmm. Who am I going to listen to? Who am I going to every Sabbath? put my trust in getting spiritual food. Mm -hmm. And and they're scared. And this question dubs into the next one here. So okay. I just um James White, 
1877 was dealing with depression of spirits. Yes. Okay. Part of it was because you just said it. He couldn't forgive himself of how he had treated Ellen White. Another part of it was now a lot. You got to stop right there because a lot of people don't realize or even understand that they had some very rough times. Why was she? Why was he? Why was she in California? And he was. Well, a lot of people don't know that that was even going on. Oh, okay. You see, that's the whole point. Okay, okay. There's so much of the rosiness of the church. It was not rosy. No, it wasn't. I understand that, but a lot of people don't realize that they had a long they distance relationship. Right. They, they had marital problems. Yes. That was she insane. Said, she said, I cannot be with you. She she, she had to leave. I'm just, that's the, it is. So depression of spirits. First of all, depression of spirits. We have to look at that term, depression. What is going to depress your spirit? Is it going to be the Holy Spirit? No. Right. So in other words, Satan is trying to depress you. Right? You aren't worthy. Right. You are uh, valuable. valuable. There you, you are not. You do not have any Jesus. words. Exactly. Okay. So now let's. So so now we got a, a, a very recent, another one, a recent experience, another one with James White. But then we go back. We go back to the to the little boy, who was at the foot of the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration, and he was under spiritual. He was under demons, right? That, we're not saying that he was depressed. It, it, he uh, was demon possessed. He was demon possessed, but. It was still under the spirit under the spirit of demons, right? Yes. And Jesus told the disciples when they asked, "Why could not we expel them?" But what was the answer? Prayer and fasting. Right. He said, "This kind goeth out not, not but by praying and fasting." So that is the cure: praying and fasting. Now let me give you something that many of our brethren who 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 have made a decision that they do not want to read the authorized Bible are dealing with. Many people don't know that this kind go without not but by prayer and fasting. Many Seventh day Adventists do not know that the cure to the spiritual, the Sister White even tells us, spiritual warfare. The spirit, you have to pray and fast. Now, why don't our brethren and sisters know about praying and fasting? Because they're using the NIV. Because the NIV Bible takes it out. Takes it out of it. And they're told it's no big deal. It's not a yeah, big right. deal, but it's, it's taken, taken out of the Bible, out of the NIV, and they're carrying the NIV Bibles and saying it's not a big deal. If you go to James 5, where it talks about um, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, it says, um, uh, confess your no, it does. It says your faults. It says your faults. And, and Sister White tells us in my character and, 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 and uh, my character personality that when we confess our sins, as in the confession in the confessional, we open our minds up to spiritual attacks. So the NIV says, confess your sins, which means you have opened your mind up to spiritual attacks. It's in the NIV. It says, confess your sins. It's not just the, S the NIV. It's every Bible except for the King James Bible. New King James, revised, all of them have confess your sins. And God doesn't say confess our sins. So it's something that's going to be here, and the only antidote, according to what Jesus says, is this kind go without not by God's praying and fasting. And the thing of it is also to understand that there's a reason why Satan is trying to remove the King James Version away from God's people. That's right. That's right. Um, and the list is so long of the reasons why and I will always hold to the fact that the prophet of God did not say that part of the writings of John in the, the first three the first the three books of John to the end mm -hmm. that some of those are altered to, to not have truth <laughs> like some seventh day evidence of teaching the fact of the matter is that the prophet of God said very clearly, I take the scripture, King James, as it is written. Amen. Now, if it costs me eternal life because I follow the prophet of God, so be it. But I am not going to come off from 
what the King James, not New King James, not any of the others. The King James is now, I use those versions once in a while when I want to under, to show the the expansion of a word, but never in a in a way that is going to undermine the foundation of our faith. And I'm not going to get into any details, but there are some times where it's it's kind of nice to be able to see um, what other versions are saying because it brings out the the truth that King James sometimes doesn't do. Like it talks about um, have faith in God. Well, actually, the original language says have the faith of God. Yeah, it's just deeper than faith. In God. It's yeah, deeper than faith. In God. So it's just one of those things. But anyway, these are some of the important things. Now, this 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 individual. I think Sherry. Just, just quick. NIV. I've heard somebody say not inspired version. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's not inspired. It's not. Zondervan. Right. Zondervan publishes it. Zondervan. Zondervan. They also yeah. published. They also published a New Age Bible too. And you, there's a lot of them coming out. And now, I just got an email from a friend who said that there's going to be a new Bible that is going to go worldwide. That is going to be pushed by the ecumenical churches, and it's going to be transgender friendly. Yes, I heard about that. Which is is almost insanity to think of because that's Sodom and Gomorrah. So what? Um, this is the next question, and, and this one here, if you want to take a minute to pray about it in your head, go ahead. Um, is there any way we can tell if we are being deceived other than knowing what the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and the writings of the pioneers say? Is there any other way that we can know we are being deceived? I always use, I always use, I mean, about 150% of the time. My wife is saying it right there, so I'm not, I'm not, a, she's not trying to parrot me, but the truth of the matter is, Isaiah 8 and 20, to me, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is no light, there is no light. And so, and I, we've had Bible studies. Trying to get people to understand that what does that really mean? Because the law, what is the law? Well, Solomon tells us, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and do what? Keep his commandments. So that's the law. That's the whole duty of that's man. That's the whole duty of man. So we know that, right? But what about the testimony? Well, we know the testimony is what John was told when he was told that the spirit of that the prophet, that the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If, the, if neither of those two things, and they both, you can't have one without the other. If whomever you're hearing it, something from, if both of those things are at the bedrock of the discussion, then you have to say, I, I, I don't think I can listen to that individual. And it can't be a twisted spirit of prophecy. It has to be, it has to line up with the word of God. And Ten Commandments are the Ten Commandments. You can't, you can't but get around them. I think you've missed the whole point. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to I'm gonna share something with you. Because mm -hmm. it's in my list of the weeks that I have. So I've been dealing with this mm -hmm. and studying and working on it. I'm going to go a totally different way. Because remember, the, the, the questionnaire says, other than knowing the oh, Bible, okay. That's right. other, other than knowing the spirit of prophecy, other than knowing the writings of the pioneers, in other words, what this person is saying, I can know all the Bible. I can know all of the writings of Ellen White mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit's inspiration, or I can know all the writings of the pioneers. Mm -hmm. But is there a way we can tell whether or not we are still being deceived? And this is where I'm going to go. Okay. You are being deceived okay. of yourself if what you know is not being led into obedience. Ooh. Yeah. Because you are deceiving yourself to think you can believe all this and have salvation without obedience. Amen. That's true. That is true. Because that's what happens. Okay. If you know to do something and you're not doing it, it is what? Sin. Sin. That's right. That's what so you can know all of this stuff. 
But if you're not in obedience, strict obedience, complete obedience, you're lost. Mm -hmm. You're being deceived. And you're going to get deceived so much you're going to give up what you know. So, so. All right? Saul prophesied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he okay. did. He him. was under the full inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He could give the best sermon there. Mm -hmm. He was head and shoulders over everybody, physically, spiritually, mm -hmm. more everything. He was right there on the top. And what did he do? He gave it all up. Mm -hmm. Because he did not obey without delay. Okay, when we disobey in delaying, at some point in time we're going to cross the line where we're no longer wanting to obey. Okay, and so this this I I, I guess it's a hard facts, but we've got to really get down to understanding. We must never hesitate. In our obedience, no matter what. All right, um, sister, 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 okay. Um, to the response that Pastor Mills just said about obedience, faith comes with obedience, <laughs> and even with Saul. It starts with faith. He didn't have faith because if he had the faith, he would not have been disobedient. But going back to, to the law of the testimony, you have to know the truth to detect a lie. So you be you will know if you are being deceived if you know the truth, right? Someone's trying to. Or if you can discern good from evil. And that's only comes from knowing the word of God. But if it's not applied in the life, it doesn't matter how much you know. Because well, that's what in obedience. the head, that's why you have to have that's knowing right. and obedience together. Okay, but and that's true, I agree. That's why I said the whole duty of man is what? Keeping yeah. the commandments of God. Isn't that obedience? Yes. Like yeah. keeping the law. Mm -hmm. But if you don't keep the law, and then you will not. Be, um, you will not keep be keeping the truth, mm -hmm. I guess you want to say, be or be acting out the truth because you won't be obedient to the law. If that's all, if the Ten Commandments is supposed to be the standard by which we are judged, and it's supposed to be what we should be living by, and if you know those Ten Commandments and you don't keep them, then you are disobedient. Or well, you figure out a way to skirt it. Yeah, see, that's 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 where I was going to go. You can <laughs> you can think. Because the Pharisees thought, yeah. all right, we're going to give you, we're going to give you thirteen hundred laws <laughs> that encompass the ten that God gave us, and as long as you take care of the thirteen hundred, which includes eight hundred for the Sabbath, you're going to keep the law of God and you'll be perfect. And so the Pharisees made it very clear that they were going to, they were going to be perfect in their duty, but that is not keeping the commandments of God. Mm. The commandments of God can only be kept when Christ is in us. Mm. And there's a lot of people who know what the truth is. They know what God has asked. And I'll give you one example. Get out of the cities. <laughs> 120 years, God has been saying, get out of the cities. Yes, I know some of us, it took us a while longer than others. And you know, I'm a prime example. I knew God wanted my wife and I to get married. Before she did, I knew. Okay. But, and I asked that we have our marriage in West Tennessee. That's where we're going to keep up housekeeping. And my wife said, yes, that's what we'll do. But then God said, no. And he said no, by every step we took, he slammed the door on our feet, literally. 
every application. My wife had an impeccable resume. She could have been hired anywhere. But every single time, it was slammed in her face. Every application I took and made to establish us in a different location than where I was at, slammed. In fact, I had an interview down in Mississippi. The people said, we want you. <laughs> Two weeks later, well, we hired somebody who was already here. What happened to we want you? Yeah. Okay? And so I just said to my wife, I said, okay, now, I know I'm supposed to be living in the country. You're living in the city. But, well, it was city. <laughs> It was more city than Holiday, Tennessee, that's for sure. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just said, okay, just ask your boss if you can keep her, keep your job once we get married. Because we thought she was going to lose her job by getting married. Because of the situation of the hospital and requirements of being there for a lot of different reasons. Her boss said, go get married. As soon as you come back from the honeymoon, just know that you're going to have some long days. <laughs> <laughs> and so we said, okay, we're going to get married. And I said, Lord, I guess you want me to go to the city. And I'm going, you're, if you're going to take me there, you're going to get me out. All right? So I put it all on God. Because I had done everything I could. Every, day, every door was shut. There was no way it was going to happen. And he, and then as soon as we asked, God said, here, come. Within hours, I had a job. All right? So I keep saying, Lord, get us out. At the very moment that my wife could retire, God opened up every door so wide. Mm -hmm. And he put us right here in Red Bull and Springs. That's that. And that's that. And so the thing of it is, if you know you're supposed to be in the country and you don't see a way to get there, do everything you can in your power to get out. Mm -hmm. And the advice has always been given to me. Don't do it alone. Amen. Make sure you go someplace where you have at least a safety net around you. Because the violence that's going to come up on this world, it's going to first hit the cities. But do not forget what I said now. It will happen also in every country area of this country. If it's habitable, it's going to happen. If you can live on this planet, you are going to see, before the close of probation, you are going to see violence hit even the most remotest areas of this country. And so, don't think you can move anywhere that is 100% safe. You can't do that. And that is why it's important to live at least where you know people or have a connection with like believers. Now, Pastor, you live out a long ways away from everybody else, but you have been here now, what, 20 years? No, how long? 13. 13. 13. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. Everybody in the community knows us. Right. Mm -hmm. Even though they may not agree with you, well, they, but but they, they will tell other people who I am. And they will tell other people. They, they know us. They know that we're good people. They know that they can be right. dependable. And you're trustworthy. And they, they will stay. That's for sure. It's, it's and no so question. at least you have that hedge of protection. Mm -hmm. You've been established now. Mm -hmm. But now let's go back and put you coming to this location that mm -hmm. you're at now today. You're going to be seen as an outsider. You are. You would have been seen back then. You're an outsider if you're not from there. Correct. Period. But at least they will assimilate you 
Because mm -hmm. you've been there 13 years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, that's half a generation. Mm -hmm. So, but now we are living in the last, we don't have 20 more years. I don't see 10, I'm sorry. I don't see, I don't see 10, I don't, and, and I'm worried about five. I'm worried about two. <laughs> so all of these things are a reality. And and so make sure you have a safety net now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, because you may not have the financial wherewithal. Mm -hmm. Because the house that we live in is over 300% value than what it was when we bought it mm -hmm. six years ago. There's no way we'd live in that house that we're in now. If you could move in there right now, you could No, move there. I, I, there's no way. We couldn't be the same thing, it would be for us. I mean, so the thing of it is, we have got to be praying and asking the Lord, okay, now what do you want us to do? Yes, that's right. Yes. But we have to be a safety net for each other, mm -hmm. and however that means. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, if you're not, if you know what the truth is, and you're not living it, at least putting a step out to be obedient, mm -hmm. don't trust unbelieving family. Mm -hmm. Unbelieving church members. Unbelieving <laughs> church members. It's, we'll it's, just it's, it. it doesn't matter. Unbelieving anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot trust them. I mean, there are seven day Adventists that say God's not that serious. I mean, to this day, they say God's not that serious. Or that you're old fashioned. That's, I'm you're, talking. You're too strict. Or you're too strict, or you're fanatical. These are, I'm not talking about the world. I'm I know. I know. And, and that's what grieves my soul, man. When I hear people saying these things, I'm going, wait a minute. What <laughs> Bible did you read from? And I think. These things are important. Mm -hmm. And how strict was it with Noah? <laughs> How strict was it with Sodom and Gomorrah with the law? It's always been strict, strict obedience. And, and, and the thing of it is, we're going to come to a point where our eyes are going to say, go to the left. Our ears are going to say, we need to go to the right. The eyes can say, if I take one more step forward, I'm going to step off into a chasm. Where do you go? You gotta go with what God says. That's correct. You have to go with what God Even says. if it is so black, you cannot see You've seen that. how you can step forward and hit solid ground. Mm -hmm. We've seen it. No way for not seeing it. I can tell you that. So. Because that's the only way we can really firmly trust God. Mm -hmm. I go back to the vision of El White. On the path up toward heaven. Those that made it Green. were they were the feet actually touching the ground before it was all over. No, we have the core. They the core. Then all they could do is hang on to the core. That's all they could do. And that was faith. And they didn't know what was going to be from the time they went to grab the core to go over. There was nothing under there. They just and they couldn't see what the core was. They, they, was they the could core. not see. No, that, correct. Now. At the point that their feet could no longer sustain them, even with a toe on the ground, mm -hmm. how big was the rope? Big enough to hold the body? individual. No. What you mean? Because big is their body? That is correct. What is this is the part that most people forget. Wow. Yeah. As big as their body. As big as your body. The faith when they grabbed the whole of it was small. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And the, the less ability to stand on the path, the greater the, the rope became. to get bigger for the faith. So until the faith engulfed the body, they were not safe to walk where there was no path. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sherry, you are completely correct. And there's not very many people that remember that part of the vision. The vision, you have to have the faith that engulfs your entire being. Because then self is nowhere to be found. Okay? Next week. 
prayer of Daniel today. There's no other questions that have come in. Is there anyone here in the sanctuary that has a question that they would like to ask? Um, yes. Okay, Gladys? And, excuse me. Um, the the question, the very first question you had that the person asked about the mystery of iniquity. Um, I went. I just was going back to the places mentioned in the Bible mm -hmm. in first, is it first Thessalonians. I don't remember where it was. Um, Yes, Second Thessalonians two seven. Um, I wonder if he had he was thinking of that verse any at all. I don't remember how the question read. Um, Second Thessalonians two seven. I, I don't know if that was what he was speaking of because wondering. in terms of the mystery of iniquity here, Paul is talking about. The wrong, the, the, the papacy on its rise. Even though you could, even though it hadn't been designated as a term, he could see the workings of this religious aspect mm -hmm. entering into uh, to control the government, entering into the Roman system. That's why he calls it the mystery, because he says it doth already work. Mm -hmm. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken away out of the way. So the, pa the pagans were allowing. The religious aspect to come in, so that's the mystery of iniquity that Paul is talking about. Yeah. Right there. I don't remember Correct. how the question. The, the way the way the question was 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 asked was not referring to this mystery of iniquity, but actually the, the sin nature of men, which goes back to Romans five nineteen. Okay. By the, the sin of one man, the whole, the whole race came in, and it did not. We need always remember that. Sin did not enter into this world through Eve. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. It was not through it's Eve. Adam. The deception that Eve was under, it was under Adam, who deception. was the head of the race. Mm -hmm. I am not going to I'm not going to make any supposition of what would have happened if Adam would have said, <laughs> no, I'm not going to take this fruit, no matter what. We're not going there. I'm just saying that Adam, as the head of the race, he had dominion. It was, dominion was given to Adam Amen. over all things. That's right. And when he chose to subject himself to the serpent, mm -hmm. then he lost that dominion. And it's only through Christ that we have that dominion restored. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer the question a little bit more further than what you did, is that dominion is restored only after sin is completely done away with. Mm -hmm. Until then, why does God allow these things to happen? Because sin has not run its course yet. Mm -hmm. Humanity has not been, been th those that are going to be saved have not been fully convinced that sin is that bad. Okay, that's the reality. Okay? And if you are evaluating whether or not God is safe, He is bringing to you the gospel. To give you the chance to say, I'll trust God over sin. Okay? That's the bottom line. And until we as individuals, whether we are in the United States, South America, Africa, or any other place on this, on this sin-cursed world, we've got to make the choice that we choose God over sin. In everything. And yes, it's hard. Because sin looks really good on the outside. All right? There is not a whole lot of joy in this world left. All right? Um, the only joy, at least personally, in my life, is the God-fearing woman that my, my God gave me. Amen. Amen. The joy in seeing how he teaches her 
how he sustains us. And knowing that no matter how difficult it gets, we're going to stand with each other Amen. and we're going to say, we are not going to back down. So be it. Amen. I don't care if I lose every friend. I'm not backing down. Amen. It is difficult. But when you make a covenant with God, don't get me wrong here. I say what I'm going to say. I studied the life of Ellen White more than 30 years ago. And I took a hard look at her first conversion experience while she was being called of God to be a prophet. Does anybody know what Ellen White asked God to do? <coughs> no. no. Okay, sweetheart. So I'm not going to say the words exactly, but the paraphrase is that anytime she, anytime she feels like she's puffed up, puffed up so to speak, to make her sick. Uh, that pretty much, that's what I remember. Amen. She was so afraid of pride mm -hmm. that she said, Lord, if pride is ever in my life, make me sick. When I read that, I studied every time Ellen White was sick. If you want a real conversion experience, just understand what the prophet went through <laughs> every time she was sick. When I asked the Lord to save me no matter what, I said, I don't care what you do to me, just save me in the end. I asked him to allow me to be sick. If I would allow my sin nature, because my family is one of the proudest families on both sides of the fence that you could ever imagine. And I knew that was going to be a battle for me. I said, Lord, I would rather be sick to the point of death serving you than to be proud. So don't feel sorry for me because I get in a lot of pain. I would rather be in pain than to be proud. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when God has been able to get rid of the pride, I'll be fine. How do we know we're not deceived? When we're willing to obey. And everybody says, you don't have to. <laughs> it's the warfare of modern spiritualism is so subtle. So subtle. We have got to be on guard all the time. Pastors barely even touch the subject. He's coming back in May and he'll be back in June. He will not exhaust this subject <laughs> in the next two sessions that he is with us. Two years. Two years. But by God's grace in May we will have already had um, Uriah Smith's book published. Amen. Um, I think my wife has one or two chapters left and it should be done with the proofreading and then I can do the final editing. <clears throat> I 
We need your prayers. We covet your, your prayers more than you could ever imagine. Um, the Lord has his cattle on a thousand hills. And we just need to say, Lord, send one our way once in a while, please. I was looking around. When we first came to Red Bull and Springs, we thought, well, we were going to have a, a, caf, a cafe open a couple times a week and, and you know, have a little restaurant and stuff like that. None of that has happened. Um, we are publishing, and we're publishing as best as we can. But it's hard when you only have a couple that are able to do it. Um, we need help. Uh, I need a complete revamping of my online presence. The church's online presence. Um, it is one of the most integral tasks of website design that most ministries don't even have it close. Mm -hmm. True. And um, and so it it takes a lot of work. All of these things are important, but we can make all this stuff available. But if you are not studying and obeying what you already have, everything else that's that's up there, out there, or whatever, it's just going to be a curse. Be obedient to what you know. Trust God; and He will enlarge your knowledge. There are things that I'm doing with my wife that. I had never done before I got here. And my wife, she says, how did you know that? I said, I don't know. I just did what the Lord put in my head to do. And, and that's why, how we live. You don't have to have all the knowledge of the world to be able to do things. You just have to have a willing heart. Mm -hmm. So with that, Pastor, if you have any last words, then we'll uh, close with prayer. Okay. I just want to um, get people to understand that this battle of spiritualism, um, it's, as the pastor says, as I've said, as you probably well know, and if you don't know, you really need to understand it's very serious. And um, when Ellen White was, was beginning in the early phases before she even put pen to paper, for the great controversy, she, because she was given an insight to what Satan was going to do, she was attacked, and she was attacked, and she was attacked. Um, so for three here, weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, three weeks. She was down. For three weeks. She was down. And she yeah. it took a while for her to be able to write. She picked up the pen, and she did not have any healing whatsoever mm -hmm. until she started writing. Mm -hmm. And, but she was writing a page a day, I think it was. No, it was a word. Okay, I know she started good. with only two or three words the okay. first day. She didn't get the first paragraph done for a couple of days, and then, then she got a page done. Mm -hmm. Then she went to two pages, and then it was a chapter. It was it was in, it was it was a battle. Right. Mm -hmm. So the enemy was attacking. Oh yes. And this was early on. And what the point is, don't take this thing. Don't take it lightly. Like once you start studying it. And I, and I would encourage everyone to read. I would encourage you, please. This is the sixth, this is what the sixth plague culminates in, but you need to know how it gets there, and you need to know things about yourself to see if you to see what how it has affected you as an individual. Because every single human being has been affected by it. When the Seventh-day Adventist Church might have hit 30, 40,000 members after the Great Disappointment. Okay, 30, 40, 50,000 members. It was only about 12. Okay, after the Great Disappointment. Right? After the Great Disappointment, okay. it was less than 10,000. 1847, they get, they get the sanctuary message, right? 1848, the Fox Sisters, within five years, right. spiritualism had somewhere around 10 to 30 million members. Our church, even today, a hundred and something years later, still doesn't have that many members. This is Satan's masterpiece. And there are people who claim to be Christians who also are practicing spiritualists. And so I want you to understand 
This is not just a, a, a walk in the park. This is serious. We're talking about, this is what Sister White says, and this is what I'll close on. She says, those who oppose, this is in uh, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 376. Those who oppose the teachings of spiritual, uh, spiritual, spiritualism are assailing not men alone, but Satan and his angels. They have entered upon a contest against principalities and powers and wicked spirits in high places. Satan will not yield one inch of ground except as he is driven back by the power of heavenly messengers. The people of God should be able to meet him, as did our Savior, with the words, it is written. Satan can quote scripture now as in the days of Christ, and he will pervert its teachings to sustain his delusions. But the plain statements of the Bible will furnish weapons powerful in every conflict. Amen. So this is, you have to be in this battle. This is, this is our lot. But you have to understand that this is not just going to be something. God will, Jesus will be right there with you through the angels. But you can't be on the field by sitting in the bleachers. That's for sure. You cannot. So we have to make a decision. And don't go like Moses Hall, <laughs> thinking that he could handle this. Thinking that he could. Moses Hall went out to try to debate those who were spiritualists, and he became a spiritualist himself. Yep. And that's the thing. That's why we are not to debate. Amen. No one to say, "Thus saith the Lord," and leave it there. Right. It's not. It's not for us to debate. All right. Most people, when they're faced with the truth, I'm just giving you this quick, quick story. I was sharing a little bit with a gentleman in the community who was working on my tractor. And I was trying to encourage him about a vegetarian diet. He says, I'm not giving up on meat. Besides, the Bible says we should eat meat. That's interesting. I don't know that verse. I would like to understand that verse. Um, and so, I said, so we we were talking a little bit, and he says, "Well, I know it's, I know it's in Gen uh, Genesis, first chapter or second chapter of Genesis." Mm -hmm. And so I'm going, "No, uh, what you're referring to, meat there, that was not meat as flesh." But as the food that God has given to us to eat, which is fruits, nuts, and grains, and vegetables after sin, he goes, well, I know it's flesh that he was talking about, and I'll show you for sure. Well, after he was done doing the tires, he, he, he opened up his little phone and started, and I, said, I said, well, maybe you're talking about 1 Timothy 4, and he, no, 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 it's not there. And I said, that, Paul is referring to the original food that God created. No, 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 it's, I think it's in Genesis. I've got to find it in Genesis. So he went to Genesis, and it is there in Genesis. The problem is, is that he overlooked the fact that to eat the flesh, there was going to be a curse with it. And I said, so you want, so I said to myself, you want to eat the flesh, and you'll accept the curse. What's, there's a problem here somewhere. A lot of people have enough knowledge of the Bible, just enough to, to give them, get them in trouble. But the reality is, is, a lot of them, they will not give up what they love to taste. Okay? Um, it was no point in me going into the Levitical laws of eating flesh, of no blood and fat, because I do not know yet an individual who eats flesh who would eat flesh if the blood and the fat was removed? No, it'd be taste. And it won't it'd be rubber. Oh, it'd, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be almost unable to eat. It'd be like yes. rubber, right. And, and so it's one of those things that, that um, you know, God's diet, not only does it smell good, when it's properly done, my wife can make some really good food. Um, Especially uh, Tastes good. Looks good. Today we had haystacks and the color. I mean, we had reds, orange, greens, and and all different kinds of colors and different varieties of the of the of the food that goes with that. And 
it's, it's all the enzymes are are, are live. Mm -hmm. The protein of the of the beans is in there, mm -hmm. and all these things that God has given to us, and you don't have the sluggishness of of a, of eating that way, where you eat a large steak dinner, for instance, and it's going to sit there and really. It won't, leave, it won't leave for a week. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people don't realize you eat the steak and your body is still dealing with it a week later. I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't don't. <laughs> I don't I don't want that. Um, anyway, God is good. He has designed our bodies wonderfully. He's told us very clearly that when we are willing to eat a diet that God has given to us, it will help our minds to be clear. We won't be clouded. We won't be fuzzy. We'll be able to understand things better. It's another reason why the fasting is important because that keeps your mind fresher. So all of these things are important. And again, we just thank everyone that has been online with us. And um, I, I wish we would have had more questions, but we've been going for an hour and a half anyway, so that's good. God is good and God is faithful. Keep my brother, Pastor, in, in, uh, in, 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 in more prayer than you do for me. Okay? Um, he is under a lot of strain that is causing a lot of physical problems too. Um, and that's why he wasn't here in December. Uh, his immune system is compromised just like mine is. I don't know why God uses people like you. Because he has to keep us humble. Yeah, keep us humble, I guess. That's the thorn in the side. Yes, and that's, that's the only thing I can say. Uh, so let's just, just keep each other in prayer. Amen. And if the Lord impresses you to call Pastor Burns, call him on the phone and just say, I'm praying for you. Can I have a word of prayer with you? I'm, I know he wouldn't mind. Amen. We all need the prayers of God's people. Let's lift up also the younger generation who God is trying to reach. I keep praying that the Lord will send me someone about 25 or 30 that will be able to take up and have the energy to do the things that needs to be done. The mind, the freshest minds and stuff like this. And I know there are gentlemen, in, some in Canada, some in the Northeast and, and other places who are trying to uh, grasp hold of the pioneer historic message of Adventism. They have generations to fight against. Um, at least some of us have been around long enough where we know where it all came from. They don't even know what, what, where, what they're being hit with, where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's just lift each other up in prayer. And time is short. I don't think we have much longer. And there's going to be a lot of upheaval. We're just going to have to trust the Lord. Pastor, would you close with prayer? Father in heaven, again, we thank you for the Sabbath day, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, not just on the Sabbath, but for our lives itself. Lord, you've carried us, protected us, you've nourished us, you've fed us both spiritually and physically. You've given us everything that, that we need not have an excuse for holding on and enduring. And Lord, we need to be emptied of self, so completely emptied of self that the Holy Spirit may dwell within us and that we may be a part of the group that finishes this work. We need an upper room experience in our own individual lives. Lord, help us to decrease. Help us to be as nothing as to be empty. So we can say, as Christ said, the, end of the prince of this world cometh and he findeth nothing. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, how dearly we desire that. We have, we have hereditary and 
learned tendencies, things that are about us that we know that we don't want, we don't desire. We still have sin that's a part of us. But Lord, we know that when we give these things to you, that you can take us and do marvelous things with us. So help us to give up those things. Help us to submit our wills totally to you. That we can say, as Christ said in the singing, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. We pray, Father, for the church family here at His Vine. We pray for the leadership, Pastor and Sister Mills, for the members and their online members as well. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to create this relationship, Father, to be kindred spirits and to work towards the finishing of the message. Lord, there's so much to do, but we know that with you, all things are possible. So help us, Father. Help us to understand our work. Help us to understand what you would have us to do. Help us to not go ahead of you. Help us to not allow the attractions and the things of this world to cloud our judgment, that we will not trust, trust the evidences of our senses. Continue to be with us the rest of this Sabbath day and continue to be with us as the new week begins. To strengthen us that we may endure. And I'll be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory, for we ask these blessings and all others in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Blessed Sabbath to everyone. May God bless each one of us in this new week when the sun sets. Be blessed.